Well, I'm back here today to give you guys a combo showcase of what the budget variant of Rescue Ace could do, even with Airlifter at one. I try not to rely on Airlifter too much, um, although Airlifter is great, right? Like, it's really the only one card starter that you have in the deck. Otherwise, you're going to be relying on a, a, a Emergency or Hydrant plus Preventer. Those are really like your main combo routes, and you got like at least 12 slots here. The drawing Emergency is pretty much full combo by itself. Emergency plus Preventer is even better because that's like OTK on one for one by itself as combo. As long as you can dig into either the Airlifter one for one or the Emergencies or Hydrant plus Preventer or Emergency plus any of your Rescue Ace names, you should be able to start your combos. If you feel like you need more starters, you could cut your deck size down to 40. Uh, maybe cut some of these Book of Moons, cut some hand traps, put your deck size down to 40 so that you're not uh, breaking as often. Uh, I think cutting your non-engine is like the best way to making this a little more consistent. It's decent at playing around hand traps and in my terahertz video I made last year, in those replay analysis, I, I show why the deck is good at playing around hand traps. And so if you guys wanna see like replay analysis or um, if you guys want me to like go online on like you go Omega or something and play like the budget variant of this deck, let me know in the comment section below. For now, let's just get into the combos. So this is the terahertz combo, right? So where if you open airlifter, airlifter essentially gives you access to the entire terahertz combo on top of giving you access to turbulence. So you set your four and you are able to activate alert because you control hydrant, summon a preventer, go into binary, Preventer, bring back Hydrant, go into Crystal Heart, Crystal Heart, revive Binary, revive Link Rebo by trimming uh, Hydrant, and then you're able to Link 5 into uh, Dark Fluid. Um, and then Dark Fluid, what it does is you mill the Cyber D Save Worm during your turn, and during your opponent's turn, you basically set up a Spell Trap Negate. You have two interruptions with Contain and Extinguish. You have Rescue for when you want to activate Contain and Extinguish. You can revive um, Hydrant, you can revive Preventer, whichever you feel is best. And this setup plays really well around Evenly, Lightning Storm, Fetter Duster, around Super Poly as well because you aren't immediately losing to a Super Poly. They have to commit resources to the board before you react with, you, with your own rescue, right? So you're not gonna immediately get board broken with this setup compared to if you went for like Heat Soul, you, you might possibly lose to like a Harpy's Fetter Duster. Also, during your opponent's turn, a Terahertz gets to mill Mariologic Aggregator at any point during their turn, which is a trigger effect negation for any face-up card that they control. That's not just monster, that's any face-up card. Field spells, continuous spells or traps, Pearly's case, you know, negating the field spell might be very important. You basically have, like, Terahertz is two negates in itself, and then you have the Rescue Ace Interruption, and this is all off of one card. You have four of the cards in hand, which, since you only did this all off of one card, you have four of the cards in hand, and it's a pretty strong setup, right? So just showcasing that, you know, the fusion does negate spells and traps. And then Terahertz gets to negate Aggregator, which can negate any um, any face-up card, right? Oh, I accidentally hit swap. It's not letting me swap back because the replay ended. Just remember that it will not be able to negate in the same chain link. Think of it like a Fenrir. When someone activates their monster effect, Fenrir cannot banish in that same chain link. It has to be in a new chain link. So aggregator will be in a new chain link but there's some interesting ways you can play around that when you're going up against bestials if they bestial drew a swarm and then they tribute drew a swarm to summon out lubelion from the graveyard on the activation of drew a swarm you can chain your terahertz right assuming terahertz is the only monster on your field you can chain terahertz you could send the mirror logic aggregator and the new chain link aggregator can target the bestial lubelion lubelion will have its effects negated so even though you lose the terahertz you still trade it so that's why it's a really good card now i'm going to show the other terahertz setup and this one requires a little more space in the extra deck and it's it's not the variant that i like to use but i feel like you guys should just know that it it exists so we're, it's going to start the exact same way you know to, uh, into the set four and it's going to go into the alert you go preventer link Kribo, right this is where we start to divert off the the other path right so now we have to go into to the reprodocus and we have the preventer summon back for hydra it doesn't really matter if, it, if, if you summon back hydrant or or airlifter as long as it, it just has to be summoned to the zone that reprodocus points to 
So for this combo to work, you need Reprodocus, a level four or lower, or lower monster in the zone it points to, and I think one more monster, because I don't think Turbulence is gonna stay on field. So Rep is gonna target Hydra and make it a Cybers type monster, allowing you to go into Link Decoder, right? And the more you play Rescuace, the more you realize it's just Co-Talker in disguise, because you can just play a Co-Talker Link Climb in your extra deck and keep your main deck as Rescuace. So that's why it's, it's, it's pretty cool sometimes. So you get to go into Link Decoder, and then you get to turn the rep and the and whatever other monster you have into protect code talker then you can link both these off into a firewall dragon and because link decoder is used as material it gets to summon itself back to any zone protect code talker has a affecting grave if you control a firewall link monster it could banish link monsters whose combined link rating is three which reprodocus and link rebo combined is three so that allows you to bring back your protect code talker and this seems like a bit excessive, right? Because it's like you have a Link 4, a Link 3, and a Link 1. You can make a Link 8 if you wanted to. When making Terahertz, it's like you have a 3 plus a 1 plus a 1. It's like you could also make a Link 6 here if there's a Link 6. That was good, but this allows you to make Terahertz because it's 3 plus 1 plus 1, and they're all Cybers. Also, Firewall Dragon gets to use its effect here, right? Since you're going to link it off anyway, you might as well get its effect. You can add back any monster from Grave to hand. Um, going second, you could bounce whatever. If you get interrupted or if you mess up the combo, oftentimes you end up on Firewall plus Protect Code anyway. And so what you could do is like you just end on these two, and then Firewall can like bounce something your opponent controls during their turn from the graveyard or hand because it has the uh, Protect Code code link. So you get to get a little follow up. So that's why this variant. Some people may like it a little more than the other. Also, if you sequence it the right way, you could uh, banish. You could have the airlifter in graveyard now that it's limited because i made this particular combo was before airlifter was limited so you can add back airlifter from grave instead if you know you feel like you need to have airlifter in your rotation for like next turn but nothing ever gets out of rotation in, in a rescue ace right like like maybe going for preventer instead of turbulence next turn so you can uh have the choice between summoning back airlifter or summoning back something else is also something you could do you could rescue for your preventer instead of rescuing for hydrant here it's all about sequencing and what you want to do and like the matchup that you're up against yeah and, and then and then you go into terahertz and then terahertz is, is the same thing but yeah, Rescue Ace is really sequence, sequence heavy. Like you have to know when to sequence things and like how to make the most use out of them. So those are the Terahertz combos. Now we're gonna go into the Heat Soul combos. So this is what happens if you just get Hydrant by itself. And so um, when you get Hydrant by itself, like you could go Binary Sorceress into Link Rebo, but it's better to get Sunlight Wolf just for the follow up because now Sunlight Wolf gets to add back your Preventer for next turn, and you have Heat Soul, and Heat Soul basically is gonna read pay 2,000, draw two. So one during your turn, one during your opponent's turn, because this was made off of, all off of using one card, you'll have six cards in hand during your turn, and then during your opponent's turn, depending on what your sets are, or, or if you drew like non-engine, completely non-engine, then you, you won't be in the worst situation because like you still have this preventer for, for next turn for follow-up and you can you can keep on playing. You can link climb again if need be. That's that's the typical heat soul route. So now this is the advanced heat soul route. This is why we put preventer up to three, because if you just draw um hydrant plus preventer, you can still resolve a, a turbulence. Even though hydrant won't be on the field, you'll still get turbulence plus heat soul. Right, so you go Preventer here, boom, Link Rebo, boom. You could go Sunlight Wolf again here, but the reason why you can't do that in this particular situation is because you need both your Rescue Aces and Grave to summon out Turbulence, so you, you might as well get the most use out of it. Also, in the case of Nib, um, if they Nib you is what it is, you just pay a thousand draw one, right? If they Nib you right here, but if they don't, cool. You get to keep playing. Turbulence at four. And yeah, Heat Soul, I would say you should wait until after you resolve Turbulence to, to get your draw one, just so you're not drawing into some of the potential sets. And another thing about the sets is that when you already have access to Rescue Ace Preventer, you don't have to set the uh, alert. You should set Emergency instead of Alert, right? So that Emergency plus Rescue, which is a really good combo when put together, 
um, you can emergency into a preventer to revive back hydrant. You can uh, emergency into something like airlifter and then like rescue, uh, rescue the monster back so that you can have access to it because you already have a rescue base on field by this point. You could get super poly, but you, but you still have enough follow up to where the super poly won't really hurt you. The mud dragon is going to hurt because you won't be able to target their monsters, but that's still fine you know um it's still better that you have a chance to keep playing than it is don't get to play at all so it's a decent setup right it's like it, it's a decent setup for um being able to draw cards not just during your turn but during the opponent's turn as well and keep your resources um plentiful so since you use two cards uh from hand you'd have three other cards left so which means you'd be at four cards in hand that, that you you know potential hand traps and such and during your opponent's turn, you get to pay a thousand, draw another, meaning you'll be at five cards total. Then you can emergency. You have the option to save Heat Soul for after the emergency. So, like in case you don't want to draw into the target that you want to summon, you know. So now Preventer you can summon out the Hydrant and uh, summoning out your monsters to the zone that Heat Soul points to is really good as well because he gains 500 for each monster he points to, so he'll be at 3300. Um. And then once they start to play their turn, you can activate something like Rescue. And Rescue can be one of two things. It can either dig something out of their graveyard that they need to play their turn, or it can get you back a Preventer, which is a quick effect Book of Moon while you control another Rescue Ace, which since you control two others, it'll be a, it'll be a pretty good interruption for the turn. You could also just save your, your Rescue in case your board gets broken, bring back, you know, Turbulence to set four again, or you could bring back Hydrant to go for something next turn. I know we're, we're, we're drawing on Hydrant, but the deck is stacked, right? Obviously you won't draw Hydrants every single time that you resolve Heat Soul, but it's still like a, a, a really good setup, right? Like it, Hydrant plus Preventer is not bad. Preventer is like the best follow-up that the deck has. So that's why you max these two out. So now I want to showcase a little Sunlight Wolf action. So in case you have access to the full combo and you don't feel like playing the Terra Hertz build, this is if you don't feel like playing Terra Hertz. Um, and let's say you have access to like a one for one instead of um, emergency, like one for one and an emergency are effectively the same card in your deck, but yeah. Uh, you get to link off into Sunlight Wolf, and then you can have like IP plus Sunlight so that, you know, IP can either pivot between Interruption, it can get you Heat Soul, it can do a lot of good things for you. Uh, you could also just go into Link Karibo with Heat Soul. Yeah, basically, you could have kept the Airlifter in Graveyard and then linked, and then he, uh, Sunlight Wolf would have been able to add it back to hand without using your Turbulence, but... Uh, this is like, okay, you can make an IP on top of making something else, right? On top of making the Heat Soul. Do IP, I mean, you could turn into Heat Soul, you can turn into Appalooza here. I guess I should just show the Appalooza combo, shouldn't I? But yeah, next combo, uh, one for one or or emergency, right? And one for one uses any monster from your deck, so it doesn't have to be a rescue basis. Like if you break off the nib or if you have a Veiler or a second Ash Blossom that you don't think you'll, you'll be needing. Then you just one for one it away. Hydrant. Airlifter. Airlifter. Get us emergency. Emergency. Get us into turbulence. And which is really cool, right? Because this means that if our turbulence gets like removed from field, if we have another one in hand, we can just summon it with using its normal summoning condition. And also since we're going first, we don't mind summoning the turbulence in defense. If we wanted the turbulence in attack mode, then we would have searched alert off of airlifter. But with alert, you would have had to link away your uh, hydrant. So that's why we do it this way. Also, um, again, if you already have the rescue preventer in hand, you can go for another emergency in the set four rather than alert. But if you don't have alert, then you go search preventer. I mean, if you don't have preventer, then you search it. But if you already have it, then it's fine. So we're to summon back airlifter here under Sunlight Wolf. Sunlight Wolf's gonna let us add back Preventer, and then we can go into an, an Appaloosa with follow-up, right? Preventer 
basically is going to be able to banish summon itself and then when it leaves field it can summon any rescue ace that we banished essentially we also have the rescue itself to revive any of our rescue aces we could revive airlifter search like a hq we could revive um, hydrant to get the most effects off of our contain and extinguish or we can revive turbulence to get the most out of it's when something leaves field you can pop something else right so let's say they they have a card that will target appalooza and remove it from field you can chain rescue bring back turbulence and because turbulence was on field it'll be able to pop something you end on an apple with three negates two back row five interruptions off of just a single one for one or or an uh, uh, emergency next we have the rescue ace otk which is what i want to call it which is a route into a guaranteed 8,000 damage 8,000 plus damage it's going to be more than 8,000. it's more like 9,000. but this is using nothing but engine and because you're going second this only uses three cards in hand which allows you to have three other cards to break your opponent's board having access to the most amount of bodies possible which is why we you know hydrant into airlifter rather than go straight into turbulence and turbulence is going to set us our four notice here again we have preventer in hand we don't need to set the alert rescue is actually a better set here where is it yeah, the rescue is actually a better set here because while we control Hydrant and we're going second, we get to revive one of our rescue aces on top of we have a really good link climb here. We don't need to activate rescue to get to Boros Orb plus Turbulence. So if you want to use Contain or Extinguish to clear the field or deal with um, problematic cards, you can do that as well and still be able to go for game. So now we go for Binary. Preventer is going to get us our Hydrant. We're going to go for Crystal Heart. And we're going to link climb, right? Because Binary plus... Link Karibo is only three arrows. Now, Crystal Heart plus Binary Sorcerers is four arrows, which means we get basically free value, one extra Link arrow. So now we get to choose any three of these monsters, right? Hydrant plus Crystal Heart plus Binary equals a Boros Sword because it's three or more effect monsters with, with the Link 2 involved. But we also have access to Rescue here, which means we can Rescue for whatever. And then we can go into something like a Nightmare Phoenix right and any any of the nightmare links here work right because binary points left and right so you can make cerberus and phoenix it doesn't matter where it points to you can use uh crystal heart or you can use binary whichever you want to do using crystal hearts better but i just i use my zones incorrectly and, and i have these guys here so i use the the binary to make this you could have used any monster plus a crystal heart going to either cerberus or phoenix into the zones it points to and then it'll be they'll be co-linked you'll be able to draw one drop one and then pop either a spell or trap, a special monster, or you can shuffle back with Unicorn. It's usually better to keep the binary sources on field than it is to keep the Crystal Heart, but you have the option to keep both for whatever reason. And then you can go into the Boros Sword. If you don't need to clear their field, then you'll have both Preventer and Turbulence. But if you need to clear their field, then you'll, you can just keep the Turbulence around. You won't be, you won't be needing the Preventer to go for game. And then that is 9,000 damage right there. And this is the final combo. So if you're going to bring this deck to any actual event, you're going to need to know how to play in time. And I think this particular combo is really great. As you can see, we crutch a lot on the binary plus G Golem Crystal Heart because it allows us so much uh, ability to pivot between different, um, pieces and uh, board breakers and tech cards and utility cards so now we get to make gigantic sprite because uh g golem crystal heart does not lock you into cybers it does not so it allows you to make g golem a uh, gigantic sprite and you can summon out red resonator from deck and because you control a monster with 3200 you can gain over 3000 and that will be more than enough to win you the game in time if you're playing against like a red dragon archfiend deck you can resolve rescue target their red resonator as well summon it back gain however much and you'll probably be able to go to, to win the game like that as well if, if they have their own red resonator post phantom nightmare you will still need gigantic sprite but if you hard open the red resonator post phantom nightmare you don't actually lose because you still get to just summon it and then link it off and then uh promethean princess can actually summon it back from graveyard so for promethean princess will be able to make this work in time but i don't want to make anything about phantom nightmare 
in terms of budget yet because we don't know what rarities these cards are going to be we can assume that they're all going to be high rarity but we don't know yet what i think is going to happen my own personal prediction is that populous is going to be low rarity but for me prince is going to be high rarity so we'll see that's been rescue ace combos on a budget let me know what you guys think in the comment section below i mean obviously apple isn't in, in our extra deck but apple isn't that expensive it's only like eight bucks you can definitely fit an apple in here you could definitely fit chicken egg sprite in your side deck if you don't feel like maining it you can main the gigantic sprite if you don't feel like playing cerberus i feel like cerberus is like the weakest link out of all three of these because unicorn shuffles shuffles back anything and it's pretty good with uh, ip you probably won't make cerberus as often as you'll make ip i think this hair stuff is too too strong to cut as well these guys could technically otk if your opponent controls multiple monsters but uh, right that'll depend on how many monsters your opponent has on field but that's been all for now this has been your boy nisha here signing out